Welcome to the introduction video of the new RapidMiner R extension. In the next few minutes I will make you familiar with its most important features. We are going to start with the console which plays a central role when working with R. After having installed the R extension, RapidMiner offers a new R perspective. This perspective resembles the console known from the original R user interface. First, we use this input box of the console to define a new function. Please refer to the R documentation in case you are not yet familiar with R expressions. As you see, the console behaves very much like the original one and in addition presents a list of all defined variables in a view of its own on the left hand side. Of course, we can also take a look at the output of a function by typing it into the input box and pressing enter. We can also store this output into another variable which is immediately added to the list of variables on the left hand side. So it is easy to maintain an overview. For editing more complex functions, a multiline edit mode can be toggled. In the multiline mode, the enter key creates a new line and the arrow keys move the cursor rather than cycling the command history as they do in single line edit mode. The multiline input is submitted by holding down the control key and pressing enter. As you might have noticed, the perspective also offers a help window. You can access the R documentation with a well-known question mark command. Of course, you can browse the documentation following the links within the pages. One of our strongest features is its plotting system. Let's see how we can use it from within RapidMiner. If we insert some R code that generates plots, we get the plot in the view at the upper right corner. We can zoom and pan or detach the view to take a closer look. As usual in RapidMiner, you can easily export your plots to arbitrary formats including PDF and PNG. As with plots, you can save data and functions you have defined in the console to your repository for later use. If you need it again, just open it either using the console or a rapid minor process as we will later see. We can open our R function again from the repository by double clicking it. Its definition is then shown in the result view. Within a process we can use it by loading it from the repository using rapid minor's regular retrieve operator and passing it as an input to the operator execute script R. In the error view, RapidMiner now informs us that we have not yet assigned the input to an R variable. We will do so now. Just add a line and enter the desired name under which it will be accessible in the R script. The first input is assigned, the first name and so on. Now we want to use the defined input within an R code fragment. This will be evaluated during process execution as if executed within R. Your code will probably assign results to some variables. Here we just call it result. Now we can select which variables should be interpreted as a result by RapidMiner and delivered at the output port of the operator. Data frames can be converted to example sets Everything else can be stored as a generic R result. If we now execute the process, the results of our function will be returned as an example set. It will obviously be useful to be able to apply R functions or transformations to RapidMiner example sets. If we want to do so, for example, with the well-known iris dataset, we just have to drag it into the process 
and connect the output of the retrieve operator with our script operator. Again, RapidMiner complains about the missing input definition, which can be added as before. Simply enter a variable name, and the example set is available in the script as a data frame of this name. Let's see if it works. We're going to add our generated data as a new column to the input example set. Just insert the input variable we have defined before and run the process. We see we have an additional column X containing our generated data. Inside RapidMiner, columns might have roles defining their role in the ongoing analyses. We can access these roles in our R script by referencing additionally defined variables. These are named as the input variable they apply to, followed by a dot and the role name. If we define such variables for the outputs, RapidMiner can restore the role information as shown here for the label. Individual units of work in RapidMiner are modeled as operators. Therefore, we have made several R modeling algorithms available as normal operators that can be used as any other RapidMiner operator. We just have to connect an example set as an input to the learning algorithm and connect the resulting model output as a process result. The R operators support full metadata checking whenever an operator is not capable of handling its input data, an error is shown even before process execution. And of course, all possible parameters are available as usual, and hence they can be used inside any of the integrated parameter optimization operators. We will now see that our modeling operators can be fully integrated into any rapid minor process, for example into this tenfold cross-validation to estimate the classification accuracy. We just replace the rapid minor learner with, for example, the naive base R operator. I insert a breakpoint to display the data after applying the model. So we just execute the process and we see the classification results with confidences for this first fold. Let's execute the whole cross validation and what we see is a classification accuracy as expected. Of course, we can save the generated model in the repository for later use. To that end, we just select a location and name in the repository. Let's see if we can reload the model to apply it on our data. Just drag it into the process and use an apply model operator. We connect the input ports as well as the model output and run the process. And here we are, we have the fully classified data as a RapidMiner example set result.